excess of race alarm that incidences of drug abuse in the country have increased by 25% in the last two years. More children are getting involved in alcohol and substance ab abuse, portending more danger to the drug addict's population. What is easily deducible here is that substance abuse and its scourge of addiction are here in our society and especially in legal state. Unlike cannabis that used to be the main source of worry in the past, we have seen opiates and cocaine use increase from 5.2% to 11.6% in the last 12 months. Multiple drug abuse has become very rampant, especially the abuse of alcohol in combination with other substances. One of the major challenges that confronts the youth today is abuse of drugs and other substances. It is a practice that has become a general phenomenon among them. Drug abuse is the use of drugs in a way that differs from generally approved medical and social practices. Generally, drugs can be classified into two categories which are soft drugs which include antibiotics, analgesic among others and hard drugs like cocaine marijuana, heroin, and also alcoholic substances, among others. Ignorantly, majority of people depend on one form of drug or the other for their various activities. The soft drug falls into the category of drugs people indulge in without doctor's prescription. This has remained one major health challenge which often results to even more complication over time. The art drug, on the other hand, is more deadly. Youth sees it as a form of recreation, an enjoyment or a means of being in the league of big boys or big girls. They also do this to achieve certain effects such as happiness, excitement and even relief from all sorts of physical and emotional pain. It is on record that people who persistently abuse drugs experience many problems such as academic difficulties, poor relationship with others, work-related issues as well as health problems which could lead to mental illness. The, the period of youth comes with a lot of um, exuberances, a lot of experimentation. So therefore many, many youth and young adults find themselves in uh, the use of drugs and consequently get addicted through experimentation. It has come to be that the gut into the use of uh, substance, it is difficult to extricate themselves from it. Because now at this stage, they have taught the brain what the brain did not know initially. Now the brain is used to this pleasure. It is difficult now to deny this pleasure away I mean, from the brain. Indeed, mental health problems such as depression, apathy, sudden withdrawal and other psychosocial dysfunction are triggered by these hard drugs. They cause the youths to disengage from community activities, thereby depriving the society of the positive contribution they would have made. The causes of drug abuse range from peer pressure, availability of drugs, depression, experimentation, lack of parental control, lack of self-discipline among others. Oftentimes, it results from circumstances beyond the control of those involved in it. One of the reasons why the youths engage in drug abuse is because most of them have um, um, personal um, upbringing, as in their upbringing is very bad. Some um, actually um, not your bad friends, they have bad friends, they, they, and they are not focused. That's one thing. If you are focused, you know where you are going, you know what you do. So, personally, I think one of the reasons that causes this is parental guidance, bad parental guidance, and bad friends. You to abuse drugs. It's because of the uh, background. I think the family, the way they were brought up, and, um, and the uh, social, the kind of environment they're living. That's what constitutes uh, uh, abuse of drugs. The abuse of uh, drugs by youth uh, starts from a peer group. Um, maybe 
the youth who are falling into a uh, wrong uh, situation uh, through the maybe attempts from the environment. So they will think that, uh, can I, others are doing it, why can't I do it? And uh, maybe something like smoking or even other drugs. From that, you will see, if there is some of anything that they can easily come out. But before you know it, you have entered. And uh, coming up will be very tedious. Uh, so, it's a product of the environment mainly. And, uh, and uh, from the parents or guardian. Addiction to drugs is a very complex disorder which brings the compulsion to experience the pleasure again and again. Drug abuse problem arises when the urge to have more on a constant basis increases. The drugs are both depressant and stimulants, making the user to feel either very high or very low. The danger thereof have been defined as a state of periodic or chronic intoxication, detrimental not only to the individual but the society as a whole. Drug abuse has a serious connection to delinquent behavior. Research has it that drug abuse gives rise to immoral activities among addicts. Marijuana, which is prevalent among the youths, for example, has been shown to interfere with short-term memory, learning and psychic motor skills. People that expose themselves to drugs are so hyperactive that nothing seems to stop them from indulging in negative activities such as armed robbery, prostitution and even drug trafficking. They are also at risk of contracting HIV AIDS or sexually transmitted diseases. There is no doubt that the consequences of drugs addiction on drug addicts and its attendant pressure on government resources which would be used to manage them and help them out of the problem is huge. It is in a bid to address this that the Lagos State Government, through the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor, organized an awareness program titled Substance Abuse, Addiction and the Prevalence of Mental Illness. The program was held at the Combo Hall of Lagos Television, Agadengui, Ikeja. Students from various secondary schools were present at the program. Psychologists and National Drug Law Enforcement Agency officials were present to educate them on the health and legal implications of drug abuse and drug trafficking. Act on the brain, okay? Any substance you take, whether you know what you need or not, if it changes your mood, if it changes the way you think, if it changes your behavior, it is a drug. Is a psychoactive substance. The only way it's able to change this is because it has got into your brain. Our brain controls our moods, it controls our thinking, it controls our behavior. If any of these three parts of you changes after taking a substance, even if it tells you that this substance is just a bottle of coke, they probably have added something to it. Okay? When we begin to use substances in a harmful way, or in a hazardous way. Ample way is when you use a substance and it begins to affect your health. Because you're smoking, you're coughing all day. You've gone to the doctor, they are giving you tablets, yet the cough persists. That means you are um, uh, abusing cigarettes already because it's causing you harm. Harm to your body, probably harm to your relationship with your parents, harm to your relationship with your peers. Your parents are saying, stop this thing. Everybody is leaving you because of smoking. Then you are already abusing a uh, cigarette. The other way we abuse substances is when we use them in a adult ways. Sometimes when people say, hey, well, I don't actually drink now, only once in a while. But that once in a while, you drink to the point that you forget your name, you forget your keys, you forget things where you drunk, and then you are going home and you go into a car. You are already drunk and you are driving. That is an adult use of a substance, and that also qualifies for drug abuse. NDA has seven directorates, but the two major branches of our activities is drug supply suppression, and when I mean drug supply suppression, 
we are talking about making sure that we reduce the availability of drugs in our society. And how do we do that? That is where what most of you possibly will know about NDNA. Some of you definitely will be surprised at what is NDNA doing here. I thought they usually carry gone. We have people that are engaged in that. They carry gone to arrest people that are selling all these drugs that the doctor, doctor earlier mentioned. We also have NDLA personnel at both the sea, the airport, and land borders to make sure that those drug traffickers don't bring in drugs or take drugs outside from this country to another country. Fine, when you take drugs outside here, it reduces what you consume, but at the same time, when you are arrested outside, it gives us negative image. So NDLA, we are in this in land border, uh, seaport, the airport, preventing the trafficking of these substances. At the same time, our major drug of cultivation in Nigeria is cannabis, that is the Igbo. Other substances of abuse like heroin, cocaine, we don't produce them in Nigeria, but they are trafficked. We have evil eyes, no doubt, because some people may wonder, you are at the airport, you are at the seaport, how come these things are coming in? Again, you have a role to play there. We all should rise to make sure that our society is free of drugs. The first lady, Abimbola Fashola, was there to encourage the students to stay away from experimenting with drugs. And the first problem is you taking that first piece. The first piece you take from anybody. That is the first problem. That is where the problem starts. And that is when you start to have those spaces that Dr. Mark Ojola showed us in your brain. Because the moment you take the first piece, you start to take it. There's no stopping. So we need to be that good peer pressure. You know when we say peer pressure, peer pressure, we are always talking about negative things that they do. So let's be that good peer pressure that we ensure that when you see somebody who is about to take it, you're able to say, my friend, I love you so much. Don't start. I don't want you to fight about it because some people may want to pick up a fight because it's like you're obstructing them. And it's not even only those Indian ends and the bow that we're talking about. What about those who take Panadol? What about those who take those malaria drugs that are not meant for you? I used to be guilty. If I have pains or whatever, I ask my friend, when you went to the doctor, what did they give you? And once she says, oh, they gave me a strap and a doll, or they gave me one serious pain, LD, or whatever. You know, when you have muscle pull and all that. The next thing, I'm not even going to my own doctor and buying the LD and taking it. You know? But it is not good. Because what will work for Bisola, it's not what will work for um, Eukarya or Eureka. We have different hormones, different blood groups, different systems that are working in our bodies. So we can't keep taking what they use for a day for next day. So you have consequences for all these things. So we have to be careful. So you need to start to dream. You need to have good dreams and big dreams. But it is hard work. And be focused. And don't get derailed with drugs. Because when you get derailed with drugs, you then don't achieve anything. Because when you go on drugs, it's not your parents you are disgracing now. Warn yourself. You become a nuisance to yourself. And then, ultimately, it, talks, it tells back to your parents that what sort of parents are they? Drug addiction is actually a preventable disease that holds people bound for the rest of their lives. It is therefore important that information is made available 
for the people on the bad effects drugs can have on their lives. The Lagos State Government, understanding the effects drugs can have on an individual, has in operation various homes to rehabilitate drug addicts. Rehabilitation ensures that drug addicts are restored back to their normal selves so as to contribute meaningfully to themselves and to the community. The centers include the Correctional Center for Girls Idiaraba, Correctional Centers for Junior Boys Yaba, Special Correctional Center for Girls Idiaraba, Social Rehabilitation Center Isheri, among others. These centers not only cater for children beyond parental control, they also correct and imbibe good moral conduct in children with one form of social problems or the other. The state has facilities and um, one of the biggest one I can say in the state and uh, the most effective is the uh, Isheri Rehabilitation Center where it is specifically for uh, young adults living with the uh, issue of substance abuse. So that is a facility that takes care of trying to wean them from um, substance abuse, trying to um, give them a, a vocational training, uh, and trying to in integrate them back into the society. And another is the uh, facility at Oregon here. That one takes care of a younger uh, 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 youth, and, and especially the one with beyond parental care, care and um, other ones that have found themselves in, in, in conflict with laws, and as a result, are done drugs, which consequently led to them using substance, I mean, as a result of using substance, they, they have committed uh, various offenses that were uh, against the law. So over there too, we do train them, we, we, we do counseling over there to them to take their minds away from substance abuse and other criminality associated with uh, substance abuse. However, to totally eradicate the high rate of drug abuse among the youths, the family or home has great role to play. Parents are responsible for child proper upbringing, care, maintenance, education, guidance, discipline, socialization and training. They have the responsibility to pay attention to their wards to prevent them from being exposed to the dangers of drugs. They should also endeavor to seek medical attention instead of engaging in self-medication. When you say somebody is a child, it means that the person lacks the ability to determine the consequences of his or her choices. In that vein, for our children not to choose from, they have to be properly guided. So the, it's when they, they are not properly guided that we say all kinds of things for their choices. It depends on their basic family values. Everybody in the family have to have basic family values. For example, if you use alcoholic beverages, you are already setting a standard for your children because they cannot see anything wrong in it. The worst part of the problem is that the next generation always take whatever you give to them deeper or higher than you gave it to them. So if you have been taking alcoholic beverages in their presence and encouraging them to participate, then that's the beginning of child abuse. Because I know people who will introduce their children to drinking beer, to say, okay, you are going to learn how to enjoy, sip. And that's the beginning of child abuse. Children should get more involved with their children. They should get to know what their children do with their spare time. They should get closer and more intimate with them. They should be able to discuss every kind of thing with them. That way you can be able to know what they indulge in whenever they are free, the kind of friends they hang out with and what they do. That way you'll be able to find out if your child is indulging in drugs or if your child hangs out with people that have tendencies to lead him or her to that kind of situation. So if from the childhood that they are growing up, then um, you, the parents, start from the example. Uh, supposing that you are 
uh, an addict in one job or the other. And you always indulge in them in the presence of your uh, small children. Uh, they will see it as a normal thing because normally children see their mother or father as the highest. They don't even know God. The God they know is the father or the mother. So I'm not uh, the parent does becomes sacrosanct to them. So, but uh, if you can indulge yourself out of, of, of the presence of your children, they will grow up and see, and see certain qualities in you that they cannot go beyond. Parents do nothing these days, definitely. Like me, I don't abuse drugs. I use drugs exactly the way I'm supposed to. I don't abuse them. Parents don't really help. Parents are supposed to encourage their children, but they don't do that. They just leave them to waste away and they keep shouting and shouting and all that. It's not supposed to be so. Parents are supposed to help, like encourage the child, you know, just like, okay, also the church too can also help. The uh, parental upbringing, first and foremost, one must admit the fact that um, moral decadence is at the root of the whole problem that is leading to the uh, perversion of um, drug abuse and abuse of drugs. People have put the essence of religion behind that are promoting social issues that are uh, debasing the norms of our society. And I think this is what is responsible. When, when parents now run after money, I have little time to take care of their, of their, of their, of their little kids at home. What you are going to have is the kind of reckless generation of young people we have now with all due respect to those very few ones that are hard working and very disciplined that's my understanding we need to go back to the basis where religion plays significant role in modeling our young ones the role of parents is the divine role that god has come to each and every one of us to guide our children aright where they are going wrong when we fail in our duty to do exactly that, what we are having in our society today is what we are going to be reaping. We now have um, a rampant case of rape, which is as a result of drug abuse, because if someone is not truly drugged, we are not going to be instead of abusing another woman, a human being of his own um, kind. I, I, I think um, our, our, our parents, we should wake up to our responsibility as natural guide for our children, our kids. We should uh, play more importance, important role to ensure that we put behind us this case for economic um, pursuits. One is not saying that we should not go for our daily bread, but not at the expense of taking care of the children. Do not abuse drugs, do not abuse drugs, do not abuse drugs. Keep your head right. Know your kind of friends. You can also influence your friends. Pick your friends. Don't let your friends pick you. The youth of any society occupies a very crucial position. Therefore, there is need to ensure they are protected from negative things that could derail their destiny and future. The youth should also know that nothing good comes from indulging in drug abuse. Through this program, government again created massive awareness on the danger of drug abuse. Indeed, programs of this nature underscore the commitment of Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola's administration to ensure a conducive environment for the development of the youths. To make a success of the efforts, therefore, all hands must be on deck by all stakeholders in order to ensure that the youths are properly positioned to take up their responsibility now and in the future.
On 16th of October every year, nations around the world celebrate the World Food Day. The event, an initiative of Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the FAO, is designed to raise awareness and understanding of approaches to ending hunger, malnutrition and poverty. It was actually proclaimed in 1979 and coincided with the date of the founding of the FAO. Indeed, the problem of hunger and starvation is one that confronts humanity. In most parts of the world and especially in Africa, malnutrition and hunger is very severe and often with disastrous consequences. By focusing on food security, it is the expectation that food production will receive global attention and encourage nations to take pragmatic steps in boosting production. Food is a requisite for human survival and well-being. To achieve this, agricultural development has been receiving considerable attention the world over. For most of history, man's connection to the land was intimate. Human communities, no matter how sophisticated, could not ignore the importance of agriculture. Apart from being the means of production of foods for human consumption and playing critical role in survival of humanity, agriculture remains a major avenue for generating employment and a lucrative source of creating wealth and foreign exchange. Agriculture employs over 1.3 billion people throughout the world, or close to 40% of the global workforce. It currently employs over 52% of Africa's workforce. Back to Nigeria. The steep decline that agriculture has suffered and the passive response from governments, especially at federal level, has made the nation dependent on imported foods. With annual import bill of about 1.3 billion naira per annum on agricultural products, Nigeria is losing so much resources importing what she is abundantly blessed and favored by nature to be a major producer. The inability of the nation to adequately tap the abundant economic opportunities available through agriculture has remained the major challenge of our development. By joining in the global celebration of the World Food Day, Governor Papatuni Rajifashala's administration identifies with a movement that seeks improved living conditions for the people. The event thus provides an opportunity for his administration to enable culture expressed its commitment to open the numerous opportunities towards making the state a force to reckon with the secretary to the Lagos state government <laughs> theme, Agriculture Cooperatives, Key to Feeding the World. The occasion was used to highlight the role of cooperatives in improving food security and their contribution to the eradication of hunger. Interest in cooperatives and rural organizations is also reflected in the decision of the United Nations General Assembly to designate 2012 the International Year of Cooperatives.
At the Blue Roof Pavilion, located within the LTV premises on Latif Jack on the Road, venue of this year's World Food Day, farmers, fisher folks and agro-entrepreneurs converged together in the spirit of this celebration. Different food items were displayed as farmers showcased their products. A parade was also mounted by different groups. The idea of the World Food Day is to draw attention to these issues and to let people know the importance of food security and the need to promote agricultural development. The World Food Day is a day that is celebrated all over the world as far as the food security for our populace generally in the world is concerned. And Lagos State is not an exception. Every year Lagos State government will celebrate World Food Day in a very big way. And that's what we are seeing today. A lot of farmers, they will come around with their products to showcase, to exhibit, to know some of the technologies that we have been pushing for the past year, to showcase them the benefits that are accrued to the majority of our farmers. We are showcasing all those things today. When we talk of food security, though people, farmers are working in order to see that uh, there is no, um, uh, what do I call it? In Nigeria, that there's no drought. Uh -huh. So that is what I'm trying to say. I won't try if possible, but say, even through the Minister of Agri, more especially uh, commercial agriculture, commercial, uh, agri commercial agriculture development authority and uh, FADAMA. They are trying. So we really encourage you as you, you have to give us a financial assistance. So, because you know how things are now. You cannot be on uh, the farm and the, if you don't have enough money, you what might be able to buy it. Because we are doing food masses. We are laying, laying this brother, cockroach, and a vegetable and all other crops. So they are a total dalani. A total dalani. A total fi mo wa ni. A fi mo bi ta wa. Ma se wa in fi. A wa in ya mo bi ta wa. Ma bere o ko wa. A wa na so fi mo total dalani. Mo gbi ya duo. Ju mo shi tu kudi e. Shara mi ye yi, o yu tuk, un tofi kudi e ni oro ile. Tori wan di amu wa ni farm settlement yi mota fun oro ile. A ri le fi bin konto toto, a wan mo ni le, wan di amu wa. As part of activities to mark this year's program, members of the Lagos State Agro Processing, Marketing and Packaging were inaugurated. Various awards were also presented to deserving farmers and institutions. In the school category, Oduobara High School got the first prize. In the Farmers Association's category, Igbalugberigbe Farmers Association got the first prize, while Ekbe Local Government got the first prize in Local Government category. <laughs> Again, assets worth over 10 million naira were presented to various beneficiaries under the Fadama project. Ikorodu local government got assets worth 650,000 naira. Anjani Cooperative Group in Alimosho got assets worth 750,000 naira. Ajeromi Feludu got 450,000 naira assets, while Owoduni, Olufemi and Good Governance Groups in Ikeja local government got 660,000 naira worth of assets. Others include Damilari Widows Group, 150,000 naira, 
in Ifakwejai local council development area, Adjose CDA got 750,000 naira. As glorious youth farmers equally got 637,500 naira only, words of assets. As the focus of this year's celebration, the importance and contribution of cooperative movement to economic empowerment of people cannot be overemphasized. For millions of people in the state and across the country, cooperative movement has become a veritable tool for income generation, employment creation and economic empowerment. The resultant benefit of enhancing the social economic well-being of members and ultimately improving the living standard of the people are the foundations of people-centered economic growth. In trying to mitigate the effect, we, we have developed new set of farmers. We have a program, Agriculture Youth Empowerment Scheme, AgriCares. The program started in 2009 and we have empowered 100 people about to empower another 200. We have another 100 that are going training now. In all, from next year, we will be, we'll be having nothing less than 500 youth in training, all for agriculture. Because with agriculture, we'll be able to provide jobs, we'll be able to enhance the food security of Lagos, and more importantly, we we'll raise the living standard of people. We we'll reduce poverty in Lagos State. 21 million miles to feed if you are in the food industry. The entire value chain from production to the market, you have opportunity of jobs. What we are doing in Lagos, we are starting from production to the market. We have a lot of our farm estate initiatives. The idea of the farm estate initiatives is to have the, the, the collective action advantage. If we are in collective, that is, we are in a cluster, we have opportunities to assess infrastructure, we have opportunity to assess extension services, financial services, and all other services, even the marketing services. If you want to buy, if you want to sell your produce, we have that collective bargaining power. You are not going to be in distress sales if you are in collective, if you are in a cluster. That is why we have our farmer smart dotted across Lagos. It's not enough, but we are increased. We are scaling the number up. And um, very soon we are going to start big mats, big farmer smart, whereby it's going to be probably bi monthly or monthly. We are all our farmers in Lagos, Badagri, we congregate at a particular spot, large expanse of land, and people will come in to buy produce, fresh produce. That is what is important. But in the entire value chain that Lagos has competitive and cooperative advantage, fishery, poultry, pregnant and vegetable, we are doing enough. We are enhancing the capacity of our farmers and our intending farmers. We have introduced bespoke training, that is executive training for intending farmers. If you want to start farming, you come to the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative. There, a group of ten, a lot of uh, uh, religious organizations and private organizations have come that they want us to assist them with capacity building. And after the capacity building, we also ensure that they have land. We, because we have this feedback mechanism that we have introduced. After training, we want to know what you are doing after the training. That is what we have introduced. For Lagos, our target is by 2015, we should be able to produce 25% of what we consume in Lagos. The concept we are right for was one to arrest situation in food security situation in Lagos State, one, and also to use the same platform to create jobs for the youth. So far, on the Rice for Job program, we have been able to empower over 600 youths in the area of rice cultivation, you know, through input support, uh, technical advice, freelance, freelance uh, preparation services in Lagos. We have uh, two sites where we operate, in Badagri, Itoga, and Itoike, on the fire axis. Uh, this year alone, we have been able to cultivate over 175 hectares in Itoike, an additional 100 in Badagri. We also have rice farmers spread across the state in Ise, Igboye and Igodu. All these actually come together and encourage the state again to now go a little bit further to establish a motorized mill. We can produce what we eat in Lagos State. If we cannot produce all, at least by 2015 we should be able to produce at least 25%. The problem we have in Lagos is that we don't have enough land. The land area is just too small. 
But from what you can see on the field, you want to prove to the old world that we can grow tomato, green pepper, cucumber in Lagos State. We produce them under controlled environment, under greenhouse condition. We can produce all the year round because we use drip irrigation. We don't need, we don't depend on rainfall. So we grow everything. Also, another project is the sheep and goat uh, project. We normally go to the north. We go to the north to buy the winners, the small ones, and we rear them to what you can see here today. We buy the small ones, we rear them under one year, they are grow as this. The small ones are at the back. As the home of cooperative movement in Nigeria, Lagos cooperative movement has grown by leaps and bounds. As a matter of fact, Lagos, with over 16,000 registered cooperative societies, hosts the largest number of cooperative associations compared to any other state in Nigeria. This comprises over a million families involved in various economic enterprises such as farming, fishing, processing, trading, transportation, housing, artisanal activities and public service. The activities of all these groups are coordinated by the Lagos State Cooperative Federation Limited, LASCOFED. We have programs, we have our land policy program, our knowledge policy program. We, have, we, we, we are training a lot of people. We are providing them with land. We have cluster land no, no, no. for specific uh, produce that we can conveniently produce in Lagos. And also we are going beyond our borders. We are already in o o Ocean State. We are in some other Southwest states. Also in the, in the Northern states, we, are, we, we have a location of land from our Northern uh, sister states. So, I mean, we, we, are, we are not waiting. We know the challenges that feeding trade one million Lagos is a daunting task which we must not and we are not going to let it slip off our hands. If, if, you, if you look back, especially within the last uh, two years, the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative has actually initiated a lot of initiatives. Not only the Rice for Job program, which has been in the existence earlier than now, the Portrip Estate project is there, which has also been commissioned to ensure that we also empower our youth to go into poultry production, both broiler production and egg production. This was also commissioned design in Eric Urodo. The Agric Yes program is there, also targeted at the youth. The fourth set has graduated now in Agric Yes. Not only that, the Songhai, uh, the Songhai model of Agric project has also come up. The coconut uh, industry is also left out. The coconut rehabilitation program is also ongoing. And also, the efforts of the commercial agriculture project and the Fadama tree to ensure that uh, our farmers are not left alone in the area of food support, it's also worthy of commendation. Long before the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, of the United Nations thought to give such a huge attention to cooperative movement, Governor Babatuni Raji Fashala's administration had taken a giant step to accord due recognition to the movement. The theme for this year's celebration is cooperatives, key to feeding the world. We all know that uh, you know, we have millions of farmers, uh, people involved in agricultural production, and uh, it is difficult to reach all of them individually. So it's some, most of the time it's easier when they form cooperatives. They come together as groups, we register those groups, and we reach out to them through their cooperative leaders. And then, we, thereby, we can be able to reach more uh, farmers. And um, in Lagos State, the, uh, we are proud to say that we have over 13,000 registered cooperative societies. Membership of those co cooperative societies is in excess of 2 million people. So 2 million adults are members of cooperative society. That's a major, significant segment of the population. And also, the asset base of this cooperative is in excess of 40 billion naira. So you can see they are also an important segment of the economy. So it is important to reach out to them, to let them know that they need to be stronger, to work stronger. We will continue to build their capacity. Well, more often than not, when we give support to farmers, sometimes they are required to bring collateral or support. But when they are in cooperative groups, it's easy because they cross-guarantee each other and we can be able to you know, reach out to them. So that's why this year we want to pay more attention to uh, you know, cooperative societies and uh, the need to uh, let them be aware of their responsibilities and their importance in the system. With total assets standing at over 40 billion naira, there is no doubt that cooperative movement play an important role 
in Lagos State's position as the foremost economic center in the West African sub-region. Unfortunately, however, the state up till now does not have a college for training cooperators. In order to reinforce the achievements of the cooperative movement and extend adequate knowledge of the cooperative practices among cooperators, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola's administration established the Cooperative College at Okwaba Agege. With this college, the administration seeks to provide avenue for cooperators to acquire relevant knowledge and skills in cooperatives without stress. This project will also ensure regular capacity building that will improve cooperative movements and propel the state economy to greater heights. Cooperatives should be seen as a tool for development. We have people pulling their resources to create job opportunities for other people. But where you have people, there must be disagreement, there must be mediation. And we must build our capacity to meet the challenges of the time. My job includes reading at annual account of all societies, their income and expenditure. Then as a government, we find out there is a gap. Even where they have surplus, they are left in the past. What do they do with it? Enterprise development to change and add to value, the economic value of Lagos State. That is the reason. Also, lack of education, lack of, lack of uh, interest by those who participate in cooperative. The state government felt that. That was the capacity of, their pe of the people. Management, auditing, enterprise development. The state government looks that in the next five years, cooperative will have added more than 40% to the GDP of Lagos State. Without doubt, the administration pushes further its determination to encourage Lagos State Cooperative Federation Limited, LASCOFED, to provide the appropriate leadership for its teaming members in the management of cooperative societies in the state. With the tremendous growth in membership of the cooperative movements in the state, government is focused on using them as a vehicle for growth. The movement has been instrumental to the attainment of government's developmental goals. The reason why government has continued to create an enabling environment for the growth of cooperative societies in the state. It is generally agreed that cooperative movement offer our youth enormous benefits in terms of personal development and well-being. Corporately, cooperative movement provides the much-needed synergy, support and partnership to overcome the challenges of modern economy. As Governor Babatunde Rajifashala's administration continues to exploit the benefits of cooperative movement for Lagosians, there is no doubt that better days lay ahead for farmers, fisher folks and agro-entrepreneurs in the state. With the exponential impact this will have on cooperators and cooperative movements, the people will be better empowered and the state economy, the major beneficiary, will experience considerable improvements. <laughs>